day today? How do you feel? Yeah, I thought it was a really good first day. I thought um, we got the pace that we wanted to see out of players. I thought um, there was a good competition level to both both groups. And um, in the end, the fellas got up and down the rink, and uh, we got some work in uh, on team play. And that was a productive first day. When you talk about that competition level, I know they're they're wired that way. Yeah. Having said that, the earlier group, they kind of know who they are and they have a spot. Then then it's maybe is it still a different vibe with the second group? Well, you know, I think the the big thing here is that um, you know we're returning a, a good portion of a team that's won a lot of games here over two years. So I think uh, anybody that's doing the mental calculus understands that you know there's there's a couple positions up for grabs, but there's also the battle uh, for ice time. There's battle for lines. There's a battle for uh, being in the lineup or not. And then uh, there's the battle to make an impression. Um, on management and on the coaching staff to, you know, um, you know, if you don't make it out of camp that you want to be one of the first call-ups uh, should there be them. Um, so, you know, I think everybody understands kind of where they fit in the batting order and what they're fighting for. But um, as I said, I, I was quite pleased with that first first day. I thought it was the pace was excellent in the competition level. Yeah, we've yeah. heard from McDavid before camp, Drysidel, Ekholm, Kane, and there's been really similar messaging coming from them about the margin between winning and losing. And it all seems to be rooted in a little bit more attention to some of the details and defensive play and commitment to that side of it. Are you sensing that from the group, and and is that something you push to from day one? Yeah. I think that's what we coach towards. I think we're fortunate because our leadership group is a driven group. So, um, you know, it's not like you're you're having um, to draw that out of anybody. It's there. Uh, the want to be the best that we can be is there. Um, you know, we we want to be a team that is perennially. Um, in the mix with the best teams in the National Hockey League. How do you do that? You do that by making sure that you're continuing to add layers to your game, to continue to knock on the door, so that one day you can uh, be ready for when that door opens for you. Uh, I think that process begins here on day one in training camp. And as I messaged to this group the other day, and I've messaged to our players, the big thing for us is I want them focused on two things. The first is their day, and the second is our standard. Jay, what did you learn about yourself uh, after last season, specifically after that series against the Golden Knights? Is there anything that you took away from it personally? <clears throat> well, yeah, I spent a lot of time um, doing our work, just as I would uh, after any year. Um, spent a lot of time on uh, physically, emotionally, and mentally renewing. I think that's a real important and underrated aspect of um, you know trying to be the best that you can be. I spent a lot of time um, going to work, uh, doing a lot of study. Uh, but the big thing I would say to you, and I would say to this entire group collectively, is that um, we started day one of 2023-24 today. And uh, we got a lot out of our group, and um, you know, uh, I'm pleased with with not only their attention to detail today, but also their work ethic. What did you think of Sam Gagne today, uh, just in his fit? Work <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, Sam, I know Ken has messages to everybody here in that um, you know Sam is um, he's working his way back from hip surgery, and um, you know he's uh, he actually had two hip surgeries. Um, one of the more recent is the one that's, you know, preventing him from being a, f you know, a full active participant, um, you know, when it comes to everything. Uh, so we're taking our time with him. He's getting his work in. He was with Group 2 um, out there today. He looked good. You know, there were some things we held him back on just uh, out of precaution. But, you know, he's where he wants to be. Uh, he's getting great treatment and he's getting better every day. Jim. Today is it similar to Ekholm that he's just got some. Yeah, you know, in the last couple of days he just had a little, little, uh, how would I phrase it? Probably um, um, soft tissue tweak, and out of precaution, we're just holding him out. We'll see his day to day for him. from the, those hard captain skates. No, you know, I I don't know when it was, um, but uh, yeah, he's just he's just out of precaution. We're just trying to be smart about it and. Um, 
you know, he, I think he's feeling pretty good. He's getting better every day, and so we'll see. Fanti's not even here. What's the story? Uh, Fanti is physically here. Okay. Uh, Fanti had um, hip surgery as well. Okay. Um, so because of the position, his recovery time is a little bit different. The way I understand it is that he's, uh, you know, he's months away. He's not, he's not day-to-day for Ryan Fanti. Brandon Sutter was uh, quite eloquent and kind of speaking about what he's gone through the last couple of years. Obviously a very well-known name, mm -hmm. had a good career, stumbled for two years physically because he just wasn't able to, he even said, stuff breathing. What do you think of this story about him, you know, maybe making it back and, and being an owner? Quite a story, isn't it? Um, you never want to see anybody go through what he's gone through over the last couple of years in trying to figure out and diagnose exactly what was going on with him. Um, and then, you know, I think he's in a spot right now where he's feeling really good physically. He did well on physical conditioning. He's looked good in the skate. And, you know, he's one of these guys we're talking about competition for, for lineup spots and, um, you know, a legit area to make our team. He's he's right there in the mix, and he's got to feel good about because you don't just walk back into being competitive for an NHL roster spot. He uh, he's put a lot of work in uh, once he he figured some health issues out, and you know I'm sure he's quite pleased with uh, that this day has come and that he's got through it, and he's moving on to the next one. I'm not asking you to pull out the playbook or anything for us, but Evander Kane mentioned the other day that there's maybe some tweaks that guys are going to have to get used to, maybe working on it as early as today. Yeah. How much do you think that margin that you're, yeah, I saw that, that you're looking for maybe lies in some of those, you know, expanded systems plays and just guys <clears throat> being able to play it different ways? Yeah, I think, you know what I, th I find is that the game continually evolves, right? And there's, um, there's almost a set of stimulus and then response. And then trying to stay ahead of that and understand why you're doing certain things um, is very important. So for us, we're, we're always looking to add layers to our game. We call it adding a layer to our onion. I think you want to do that without uh, abandoning what makes you a really good hockey team. So um, there's parts of our game that we want to add to. There's parts of our game that we're going to continue to, um, you know, stress and make important. Um, and as I said, today we, we began that process today. So Can stimulus and response, uh, I guess that would be like Vegas and then where you are now. Did you, I, I would imagine you have the most receptive group to defensive change that you maybe have ever had. Well, what I, when I say stimulus and response, I think that's staying on top of the way the game is being played. You go to a certain team, I think um, you would be remiss if, if you, all you did was try and copy what someone else did. I think the big thing for no, did, yeah, just but yeah, you know, but aspects of their way. game, right. yeah, uh, like uh, what I mean by that is, um, you know, the the Tampa Bay Lightning won their Stanley Cups a certain way with the personnel that they had. Um, Colorado found a way to have success in their own manner um, with the personnel that they had. The uh, Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, found their way with the personnel that they had in a certain way of playing. For us, our focus is on maximizing uh, our team personnel. And if that means adding layers like uh, we discussed with Ryan here, um, you know, I think that's important. It's an important first step. Um, but I, what I really like, and this goes back to Ryan's first question, I think the mindset, the group mindset, is in a really good spot. Um, you know, they've embraced this idea of of um, blue collar work work ethic. Uh, they've embraced this idea of um, continually getting better each day, and uh, looking to find um, small things on the margins that can help us win long term. Jay, what part and uh, components of Bo Aiki's game have stood out to you in Penticton and maybe in day one here? Yeah, you know what, this is the first time uh, that I got to be on the ice with him. And um, I, th I was surprised by his poise. I thought he was, you know, he's a good size, he skates well, uh, but his poise out there uh, with a lot of uh, professional hockey players I thought was very good. I know in Penticton it was more against his peer group, but here you're seeing you know, professional hockey players that, that can make plays, and I thought he acquitted himself really nicely. Jay, just to go back to uh, Sam Gagne for a minute, sure. you had a chance to coach him for a very brief period in yep. Bakersfield and know him a little bit, but yep. uh, it's going to take a while to get up and running. But once that happens, and if that happens, what 
can he bring to this team? What do you see the perfect uh, scenario for him being? Yeah, well, Sam has played in the league uh, a long time, going back to, you know, being a first round draft pick, finding his way in the league. And then he's kind of um, gone through different phases in his career. And, and over the last couple of years, he's he's found a way um, to make impacts by being a solid veteran player, someone you can rely on uh, in the 200 feet of the rink. Um, but I think his experiences l lend him to have a um, real good perspective and there's good leadership qualities in him. He's very bright. And um, but you know the big thing, as I said earlier, with his injury, we're just taking it one day at a time with that. We're not rushing it. We have patience. And um, you know when he's ready um, to be put in competitive situations, we will. But we're we're not going to rush it. Is there any soul? Soul is probably isn't the right word, but when you lose to a team that wins the Stanley Cup, as mm -hmm. the Oilers have the last two years, are those learning tools, or do you just say to yourself, well, "At least we didn't get beat by a team that lost in the next round, but yeah. team that beat us won the Stanley Cup." Yeah, I, you know what? I, moral victories, I'm not a big guy on, um, but but for me, you know. Our focus is on 23, 24. I think, as I said, I mentioned those three teams that have won, won uh, recently. All of them uh, didn't just happen for them. They had some playoff scars along the way. Um, but as I said, you guys are going that direction. I'm going on focusing on our daily process because I know uh, the beginning of 2023, 24 has just started and we're looking forward. Um, you know, to laying a foundation here in training camp so that um, we can get off off uh, the ground running here as we start the season. This is your uh, second training camp as head coach. Do you yep. feel like, I don't know, more prepared for this training camp than you were a year ago, or is there a different feeling for you this year oh, than last no. year? You know, I did my second training camp as the head coach of the Oilers, but I've, you know, this is my 19th training camp in the NHL uh, or going to NHL training camp. So, you know, I've... I feel ready, but I I've, have felt invigorated by the attitude um, and commitment of our of our players. That gets set from our leadership group, and um, you know I can just tell you that the look in our players' eye, uh, as we gave our opening meeting yesterday, and then the look in the players' eye when uh, we began our practice here uh, this morning, I thought it was really impressive. And as I said, I felt invigorated by it. What do you want to see from Lavoie that you maybe haven't seen in a couple other training camps? I mean, obviously he played much better in the second half last year. Yeah. It looks like a close to being an NHL player. What do you want to see this camp to push him over the edge, I guess? Yeah, you know what, in his time in the organization, you know, there, the first one was that pandemic camp. He was in Sweden, so he didn't even get to go to a, a pro camp there. And then, you know, um, you know, last year he was hurt during training camp. So for me, um, I just want him uh, to be himself. I want to show why he's getting the opportunity that he's getting, which is, you're right, he had a really good second half of the American Hockey League. He shot the lights out. He was someone who, um, you know, could play either wing. Um, he's going to get a healthy look here. And so now it's incumbent upon him to show well every day uh, and te keep taking steps uh, so that, um, you know, he... He forces his way in, and that's the challenge before him right now. You call it privileged ice time, right? Yep. Does he have to get some of that first to show, and then you decide if he can Is continue that, to have That's it? kind of chicken in the egg, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, the good part about privileged ice time early in training camps is that you're typically not dressing a full lineup. So there are doors open, and... And those players that are kind of on the bubble are going to get opportunities. And, you know, I think for coaches, the most important thing is that, you know, it's one thing to give an opportunity. The next thing is to make sure you're evaluating it correctly. Uh, and you're evaluating what different people bring to the table. Uh, so that's what we're putting a lot of focus on as a coaching staff.